kind of tells you, doesn't it? Like where his career's been at and stuff. For me, one of the memories that I always have, I'll always have of Tommy, was the try he scored against Bradford. In you know the game where we came back in the playoff match. Well, in the first half we scored one try, and it was Tommy scored the try, and the Bradford defender had kind of tackled him as he was diving in to score, and knocked the ball loose. So Tommy lost the ball and regathered it again before he grounded it, and then scored the try. And I always remember that try, thinking that was like great coordination and skill to get that ball back under control after a good tackle, and. And that's, you know, on top, that's alongside all of the massive granite shoulders hits that he's put in, all of the, you know, match winning performances he's put in. He's, he's won a man of the match in a grand final, hasn't he? He's won, he's won everything in the game with Wigan. Um, and he's won a World Cup as well with New Zealand. He's had an outstanding career. Yeah, certainly has. But, but um, I thought we had agreed not to bring that game up again. You'll, you'll be triggering my PTSD. <laughs> um, Okay, the other game, the next game to talk about, we're on to Saturday now. Hull FC versus Hull KR. It was 24 4 to the visitors at half time, despite them only having 16 players. We're going to say 16 players a lot, I think, in the next 10 minutes. Um, the final score was 36 points to 4. So uh, 16,999 was the crowd, the best figure for Hull FC this year. Liam Moore was the referee. Um, in terms of the team stats. 16 man Hull KR made 569 more metres at 2 metres per carry better average gain with 4 breaks to 2, fewer errors and fewer penalties conceded and a 3.5% better team tackle success rate 17 man Hull FC were under 900 total metres and under 90% team tackle success rate So for Hull KR Ryan Hall had Ryan Hall had a try, 185 metres and 3 offloads, Kane Lynette with a try assist and 178 metres Ethan Ryan with a try and 151 metres Sam Wood with a try assist 122 metres and 3 offloads for the hapless FC Harvey Barron had a try assist and 112 metres Cam Scott had 104 metres and John Johnson had 41 tackles 10 of which were for marker you could argue that Harvey Barron had three try assists just not all for his own side I think Ethan Ryan's try was the best of the of the game um the only one that actually seemed to be about fluid attacking play rather than something different. Um, but yeah, always in our shadow said, fair play to Tom's mob. They just wa- they just waited for FC to fuck it up and then ran away with it. Time for Gale to fuck off, won't be missed. Scored a backup try and then giving the FC fans the big I am cup hands behind his ears. What a wanker. I did note that. I had I had written down was Gale goading his own club's fans with the hands behind the ears crap when he scored. It's really not gone well at Hull. No wonder he's off is what I've put because it has been confirmed he's going to be leaving Hull FC after one season with them. Jordan Johnston, Marcus Walker, and Aidan Burrell are the other people that are going. We know Manu Miles joining Catalans and Will Smith has only been on a short term deal, so he's he's off as well at the end of the year. Um, but yeah, Luke Gale. I mean. He's going to get so fucking booed if he does end up at a Super League club and back at back at an away game at Hull next year, isn't he? Yeah, it was definitely to his own fans because because the KR fans were behind the other 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 at the other end. Definitely. Oh yeah, I know. But was it uh, like was the gesture like uh, you know because they've been booing him or criticising him, or was it just like let's make some noise? I assumed the former rather than the latter because he's a bit of a prick. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 not the it's not the gesture when you're uh, when you're miles behind, is it? <sighs> anyway. Well, at that point, I think it was four all. Oh, was... But then he missed a goal kick, didn't he, to make it six <laughs> four? Um, because, well, you know, too busy pissing off his own fans. Um, it just basically worst captain appointment ever. <laughs> and yeah. I hope he has a better life when he's at Wakefield or whatever championship club he goes to, maybe because. I know he has his like academy and stuff that he set up or whatever it is, and I hope that goes well because I hope he can give something back to rugby league because he gave nothing to Hull FC. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, Salford definitely got the better end of uh, of the oh, the seven swaps in merry go round, didn't they? <laughs> Um, B Dawson 1902 says utter embarrassment. I'm not going to another game until that cunt Hodgson is gone. 
And that brings us to, we'll talk about Hodgson's departure later on because we've got like fan views just on that. But don't worry, Brandon, you can get to a game next year. Um, Esther said, well, that was pathetic. Back to the rubbish we've seen too much. We So many drop passes on tackles one and two. Players not taking tackling properly and spaces everywhere. Gail showed how rubbish he is as a captain getting binned, although Moore didn't want to bin foul play. Past it, players going through the motions but will be Harvey who gets the blame. Uh, Joshua's granddad says, what a shit end to a shit season. No credit to any player in black and white. Thankfully, that's the last we see of Gale. Pity he can't take Taylor with him. Only showed passion when he got up and chased player after feeling he'd been fouled. Baron is going to have to learn how to catch and keep the ball in the tackle or he has no Super League future. Other players just as guilty of not respecting the ball. Page says, well, what an utter shambles our club has become. The players have no pride. They let themselves down, the, the club down and the shirt. Not one of them played with pride or passion. No one wanted to do the hard graft, so we kick on the second or third tackle. When things get hard, our main players go missing. Good riddance to Gale, what a liability. Can't wait to see what this big plan is going forward. Has to be better next season. And Scoot says, I can only assume the players are going out to try and get the manager sacked. <laughs> Not a lot Success. else, mate. Yeah, and all else makes sense. If so, it's truly disgusting. Who does Gale think he is with his celebrations having a go at the fans? Errors galore on tackle one, no effort in defence, all in all, an absolute shambles. We've got a whole KR view to balance out all the negativity of the whole FC fans there, but um, when they were talking about like next year and stuff and the plan for next year and Paige saying about that, it's just reminded me, I think if Truman had played a full season at Castleford he might have been a shout for the dream team this year because he was actually performing really well um, on the quiet because Cass weren't televised as much and but you know he had a not functioning at top level McShane I think Truman was the main man during that period McShane stepped up a little bit when they went on the winning run, when McShane, when Truman was out injured, no doubt about that. After his abysmal performance for England, he saw that he needed to improve and did. Um, but Truman, I, I, I think they can, it, you know, if they get the best out of Truman, then it's going to be a much better season for them next year. Um, Tom Andrews said, even the craziest of Rovers fan wouldn't have expected that. 16 men and we took the piss. Got them rattled early and they couldn't handle it. Vetti was immense. Where the fuck has that been for two years? Ryan looked classy. Will Tate had a coming of age game and the noise from the fans was insane. You follow a team all year, ups and downs, but once in a while you get a magical game like this and it makes it worth it. UTFR, which we know means up the fucking Robins. <laughs> quite I mean what is the biggest story here I'd, lo I'd love it to be that a 16 man side went in clearly had way more appetite for the game clearly wanted it way more and completely outperformed the other side and I think if this game was played at Hull KR that would be what we're saying but it was played in front of the Hull FC fans at their home ground I think we're talking more about how their goal line defence and their own errors was really the undoing of FC and Rovers just picked it off and powered it over the line and took advantage of it all and drilled it into the ground and and Hull FC are in absolute shambles and embarrassment I think that's quite a good summary <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, obviously we, we can t we can talk about you know coaching changes etc. And I'm sure we will. Uh, I my core issue with with uh, with FC is I don't know what they are, and I don't know if they know what they are. I, I don't feel like they have a real identity as a team, and. The fact that they're kind of, I don't know, I, I don't think that helps. You know, I don't know what they, I don't know what they were planning to build towards. I don't like some of the signings have been weird this year, and I think I think this game is just this as as um, as uh, uh, John said, you know, very well shit into a shit season. I think you know it's a perfect kind of summary of wh where they've been this year, and yeah, a god awful effort um, against a against a, a ramshackle KR kind of put together at last minute 
bit of uh, sticky back plastic to stick them together and yeah really 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 bad from from fc's point of view really and you, you understand the decisions that were made afterwards you have to say yeah so in terms of capping off some bits from this game what i would in you know you've got one team that now the off season well the club have given them the fans some hope with the decision with the coach sacking we're going to talk about but you've got another team who basically had a real crappy middle of the season didn't they whole kr after getting after the end to last season beating warrington away in the playoffs the start to this season getting to the cup semi-final everything was feeling good and then they had a, a shocking sort of late spring early summer didn't they sort of spring some spring and early summer was terrible for whole kr and then they've just about made up for it by having this euphoric end of end of the season win with no team incredible stuff for their fan base i would i would like to think um luke gale got a grade a dispute decision one match penalty notice for him so whoever does pick him up will miss him for their i guess he'll manage to scratch that off in a pre-season game won't he um Matty Stoughton got a grade A dangerous contact. No match penalty notice for him. He's he's not been naughty previously enough. Um, Cam Scott, he was in the stats roundup, weren't he, this week? I think he was last week as well, um, as he's come back from injury. He signed a 12-month extension to his current season, to his current deal at Hull FC, so that keeps him there now until the end of 2024. I've talked a lot. Me and Sarah have said it a lot. We like Cameron Scott, um, so I, I'm glad that he's going to get another opportunity and not have to worry about his place at Hull FC after what was another injury ham- hampered season for him. They clearly see something long term, longer term in him there. And then the big one, Alan. Indeed. Hull FC head coach Brett Hodgson has Brett Hodgson has left the Super League club. The 44 year old arrived ahead of the 2021 campaign. Hull FC finished ninth in the table, so they will appoint Hodgson's replacement in the near future ahead of a full pre-season. Assistant coach Kieran Pertil and head of performance Paul Hatton will also leave the club. They are clearing the decks. <laughs> Um, it, it, well, it's a clear, it's a clear uh, assessment that um, nothing that was in place previously um, is working, and they, 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 they need to completely start again from from a coaching and player development point of view. It would look like, yeah. Um, we got some fan views. B. Dawson 1902 said, he's gone. Let's hope we now go and get a proven senior coach that won't be afraid of bollocking players and someone who'll give us an exciting brand of rugby. Sorry. And uh, I missed that bit. Um, Bread and Loftus says, a beacon for Madge. <laughs> Need a total change, just like he did with Wigan. Proven winner, winner at Wigan, South, and even at West Tigers, they overachieved compared to what happened this season. And David Hunter asks, is it the coach or is there another factor at Hull FC? The last coach had a similar late fit, late season fade, I think. I think the coach had to change. I don't know if the coach is the whole problem, but I think the coach had to change. Yeah. I, I think it's... It's not... The situation isn't the same as the situation at Wigan last year. But in the sense of it needing a real kind of clear out and a, and a real change in the kind of coaching mentality, I think they're in a similar position, aren't they? Um, I think it falls somewhere between what War- what Warrington had looked to do, and I think Warrington and Hull FC are probably good equivalents as clubs, and then what Wigan felt they needed to do. Mm. Yeah. But as I said to you before, I, I, I just I don't know what Hull FC are trying to achieve. I don't. They don't. They're not a forward first team, particularly. They're not a throw it about team. They're not a defensive masterclass team. They're kind of they're falling between all these stools, and I don't quite know who they are. Well, there I, can we get enough minutes out of Chris Satai for him to damage the opposition forwards? Because he does when he when they do, and then can we get more good Jake than bad Jake? And that seems to be it, doesn't it? They have had a lot of injuries. I think to keep like both their centers have been out and both their backup centers have been out so that's not been ideal um they made a terrible recruitment decision didn't they in luke gale it's just not worked out for him at that club yeah 
and I think they've lent too much on some players who've 